137.1 has particular, as Justice Martin has noted, purposes. These are proactive to encourage or promote public interest expression, to discourage legal action that hampers that expression. With respect, the Court of Appeals' reasons and points has constrained 137.1's availability to defendants at odds with its proactive purposes. Today, I'll make just a few points on the two constraints that EcoJustice has raised. The role of context in assessing public interest and the issue of how to handle more complex, which are often other than defamation suits. The Court of Appeal does acknowledge that context is important when assessing what is a matter of public interest, but its reasons ultimately send a mixed message. The Court of Appeal tells motion judges to only apply certain sections of grant, mainly the was the publication on a matter of public interest section. And at 4B, where there is an evidentiary burden on defendants, the Court of Appeal gave only negative examples, where the content of expression reduces its public interest weight. The public interest assessment in Grant isn't cleanly analogous to the 137.1 exercise. Grant was specifically modifying defamation law by adding the responsible communication defense. Also, expression in 137.1 is defined broadly and is not limited to defamation. In other words, the public interest exercise in Grant is not apples to apples with the public interest exercise in 137.1. It also bears noting that the Court of Appeals references in points exclude the contextual public interest factors set out in the was the publication responsible arm of grant. In particular, the factors of public importance and urgency at paragraphs 112 and 13 of that decision. We see the tension between 137.1 and grant play out in the Paramount case, which is at tab three of the condensed book. The motion judge in that case even after noting that Grant may not be the last word on 137.1, for the reasons I've just cited, concludes that the focus in 137.1 is on substance, not occasion. That principle in particular is an artifact of the responsible communication defense being developed distinct from privilege. There is no principled reason to apply it whole cloth to 137.1. Now, the judge in Paramount was dealing with public interest solely at the sub-3 threshold. The grant 137.1 disconnect could have implications at 4B as well. At this stage, the court has to assess the weight of the public interest in the expression and balance it against the harm or likely harm to the plaintiff. In the Daishawa case at tab 4 of the condensed book, Justice McPherson, as he then was, took a very broad assessment of context before concluding that the issues were very important. If he had taken a narrower approach to context, his conclusion of how important the expression was might easily have been different. And that difference could disadvantage defendants in the 4B weighing exercise. If uncorrected, the Court of Appeals guidance on matter of public interest has the potential to send the application of 137.1 in the wrong direction. EcoJustice suggests that this court can avoid that outcome by building on its guidance in grant with the needs of 137.1 in mind and recognizing appropriate categories of public interest that pre presumptively draw significant weight in the 4B exercise. In particular, we would suggest participation in environmental decision and policy making as one such category. The second constraint, how to deal with more complex causes of action which are often not defamation suits. We've already heard from counsel for points on the interpretation of arises from. Uh, and we would submit that the numbered company's position on this point is, as Justice Rowe submit, suggested, artificial. But the Court of Appeals concerns with handling a breach of contract suit weren't limited to the sub three threshold. In part, they were based on the too high premium that the Court of Appeal placed on the summary judgment process. The Center for Free Expression sets out well in its factum that the uh, Court of Appeals reasons for doubting that 137.1 could in fact provide a just and fair result in these situations is not in fact borne out. There is more space in 137.2 to investigate the merits than the Court of Appeals seems to suggest. But even if the plaintiff can meet the 4A threshold, or in some certain cases, it's not appropriate to find under 4A, it is still possible to use the 4B. 
a motion can proceed solely under that arm. And the Court of Appeal acknowledges this in its decision. In Justice Rowe's words, this is another modality to achieve the legislation's purpose. 4B only looks at the harm suffered or likely to be suffered by the plaintiff, him, her, or itself. And Mr. Winkler set this out very well. I would ask you to conclude, please. Thank you. It's the seriousness of that harm that's weighed in 4B on a plain and ordinary reading of the provision. And defendants should accordingly be given full reign to argue for dismissal. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Goldenberg.